Hi, my name is Al. I'm here to talk to you about some of the tips and tricks that I've learned over the last 20 years, planning, building, and finishing my Lotus 7. It's been a long process, but I'm so glad that I did it. I've been involved in some of the forums, but haven't made a whole lot of posts. If you've seen any of them, it would have been done under the name of Gunner1. My profession had nothing to do with building cars. I got all my information from forums, from the internet, from books, and a welding course I took at a community college. So today we're going to show you some tips and tricks that I learned along the way that made the job a whole lot easier. And here it is, proof of life. That is a McSorley 2 plus 2 plus 2 frame, as opposed to a book frame, as opposed to a McSor McSorley 422. The difference is this is only two inches wider, two inches higher, uh, and two inches longer. We basically changed things around. Uh, Jim did some special plans for me, and we took some room out of here, and we added it into elongated scuttle and foot area, which draws your feet further out of that tunnel and gives you a little more room on either side of your pedal because the whole thing is wedge-shaped. Point of this is that if you've got a new frame or you're building your frame, take into consideration aspects like foot room, ground clearance, clearance for your motor. Make sure there's enough room for your differential. And don't be afraid to do up a build table. And even if you got a frame, change it around because you're going to put a lot of work into this car and you want to start with something that you're going to be happy that, with when you're finished. Moving on to forming aluminum panels. This body was made from a combination of 3003 and 5052 aluminum. Um, the hood, the scuttle, and the back apron were made by 050 aluminum. The side pieces I made with 063. The floors I made out of 0 0.10 aluminum, and that was 5052. Aluminum floors are a really good idea. Um, they weigh about one quarter that of steel. Give you an example, a four by eight sheet of steel, 16 gauge is 80 pounds. The same sheet in uh, 16 gauge aluminum is 28 pounds. So it makes sense to uh, stick with the aluminum. When you're doing your aluminum panels, you'll see that they're pretty darn large. I like to use what I call my CAD design program. That's actually cardboard-aided design. Now for these panels, uh, the best tip I can give you is make them up using tar paper. Um, they're huge sheets of paper. You don't have to glue a bunch of sheets together, and it actually folds very much like aluminum. Concerning the floor, I made mine out of aluminum, and I made it in one piece. The reason I did that is just my concern over the structure of the frame. There's just not a whole lot down the center of the frame to keep it going from side to side. Um, there's a lot of triangulation in the frame, but if you look down towards the floor, it's a box. It's not triangulated. So I made mine out of one piece and made it out of aluminum. Now, some tips and tricks about doing this. Bonding steel to aluminum involves a lot of process. It involves taking the scale off the aluminum where you're going to be bonding, roughing it up with a flap disc, and you've got to use one flap disc for the steel frame and one flat flap disc for the aluminum. You just can't mix the two. Make sure they're both clean with alcohol. Now, I used aircraft structural adhesive, 
as well as cherry rivets, one-eighth cherry rivets, um, holding the whole thing together. We use cherry rivets because they, when you pop them, the uh, pin stays in them and seals everything with water. It also makes them a lot stronger. All this is available from aircraft spruce. Um, when you're clamping the floor to the steel frame, use lots of clamps, but don't make them tight enough to squeeze all of the epoxy out between the aluminum and the steel. It's a bit of a bit of a sweet spot you've got to find. Also, when you're dealing with structural adhesive like 6228 air epoxy, you've got to do this in around 70 degrees. So a cold garage isn't a good idea. The uh, 6228 epoxy, air epoxy, is amazing stuff. Aluminum to aluminum, it has tensile lap shear strength of 3,480 PSI, a tensile strength of 9,500 PSI, and a compressive strength of 12,000 PSI. So you're just adding a lot of structure and stability to your frame. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the hood louvers. You'll notice when I did my hood, it's got quite a curve to it. As well, it's got a bit of a crown to it. That could be problematic when you're trying to punch in louvers because it puts dents everywhere. My solution was to buy pre-made louvers in the same gauge as my hood was made up, which is 0 0.050. Then I made a backing plate and epoxied that and uh, flush riveted it with solid rivets to the bottom of the hood. Then I took my louver plate and just gently bent it into a curve by hand and dropped it into the plate and again riveted it with solid countersunk aircraft rivets and aircraft air, uh, air epoxy uh, 6228. Now, as you can see, I was worried about cracking, but as you can see, it hasn't. Best tip I can give you is make your seams, make your fit as tight as possible. This has been about two years, and again, no damage to the paint. Now I'd like to talk about adjustable suspensions. Um, the front suspension I purchased from Speedway Motors. And you can see this piece here will fit um, a uh, various ball joints that can screw in. This one is actually a Dodge one that actually goes into a a Mustang II suspension nicely. And then back here, there's Heim joints. This rod here has a right thread, right hand thread on one side and a left hand thread on the other. And you can actually turn them so that the suspension opens up or compresses. Just by doing both this and this um, control arm, you can control your caster and your camber. The bottom control arm is fixed. The other alternative, well, I wouldn't do this on the front suspension, but on the back suspension, if you don't want to uh, put right and left hand threads into your uh, uh, control arms, you can actually cut jack shafts or jack adjusters in. Um, should be a picture up on the on the monitor. Um, basically what you're doing is you're cutting your control arms for your five link suspension and your pan hard rod, just cutting them, cutting a piece out of them and uh, substituting the jack shaft, threading one jack shaft, right hand thread, the other side, left hand thread, and uh, 
uh, the jack shaft and putting a uh, jam nut on. And uh, just by turning the jack shaft, jack adjuster, um, you can increase or decrease the length of your suspension piece. Uh, just going back to the front, because it's just easier to, to explain. When you're doing these, I always make them out of DOM, one inch DOM, which you can buy in various wall thicknesses. These are actually 1 16th, and I've plug welded slugs in that are threaded, left and right hand thread. If you want to make it really super easy, you can go up to a quarter wall or whatever size you need that your, uh, your threaded uh, joint is, and you can actually just tap directly into it. A uh, very simple way to make up these pieces. By doing quarter wall, you're adding a little bit of weight to the whole project though. Now, in terms of making cable ends up, I've got uh, an emergency brake in here that's hooked up to my uh, Mustang two six and three quarter rear end, and there's a couple of cables that go back there. And getting a cable, a heavy stainless steel cable of the right length is sometimes a real problem. Um, should be posting a uh, picture of a way to put the cable ends onto your stainless steel cable. Basically cutting the old ends off, um, taking a uh, couple of pieces of half inch aluminum uh, and uh, clamping them together. Drill a hole of the diameter of your cable end that you need almost through to the other side. Then drill a hole in the joint between the two pieces of aluminum about the diameter of your cable and insert the cable. You might want to fray the end of the cable so they splay a little bit into the hole that you've drilled um, so that when you try and pull it out, it's just difficult to do. When done, grab an old lug nut or lug wrench and uh, put some silver solder into it. You can get that at Canadian Tire or Princess Auto or pretty much anywhere, any plumbing place. And uh, take your propane torch and melt it. Um, when you're done, when it's all melted, you just pour this uh, silver solder into the top of your mold and uh, let it harden. The pictures that I'm showing you, I've already taken the clamp off holding the two pieces of the mold together, but you can see where the wire goes in and where the silver solder is added. Now I'd like to talk to you a little bit about making up your trunk lid. There's various ways to do this. Some people have made them out of stainless steel. Some have formed aluminum pieces. Um, some have put uh, vinyl tops with poppers on them. What I did was I made mine out of 1 8 ABS sheets. Um, what I found was that you can, actually a friend of mine, uh, Peter, showed me this, um, was that you can uh, take these sheets and you can bend them simply by heating with a, with a heat gun. Once you've heated a specific area, in this case you'd put something along the top, like a piece of wood, you'd heat it and you take another piece of wood in your hand and you'd push this down to where you want it. And as it cools, it hardens in that position. Um, same with this, you can actually just work your way around with a piece of wood, put a piece on top and then just push it down. Like I cut a piece of wood that covered that shape and then I would just heat the corner up and I would just push it down and just hold it and let it cool, hold it and let it cool, hold it and let it cool. And you can get all sorts of shapes out of it. You can use standard ABS glue um, to hold some of the panels together. Like for example, there's a, you'll see a piece down here that stops the 
lid from falling through, that's bonded on. You can either use ABS glue or you can actually make a, make a bunch of shavings of this uh, ABS and mix it in with some acetone. And once it all melts, uh, it makes a pretty darn good glue. You can also make the interior of your trunk out of it also. Another tip I'd like to show you, it's a real simple one. Sometimes we have to tow our cars, but there's nowhere to hang on a, a tow hook. Well, these lifting eyes, one that I got from Amazon, just screws right onto the end of an elongated bolt for my suspension. I've got one on either side. Um, strong as houses, more than enough to lift the car right off the ground. As for the rear hooks, they're just welded onto the frame. Oh, if I can show you. There it is. And it's just something to pull back. Um, you can actually bolt those onto your frame, just a couple of eyes like that. Another thing to show you is my rear bumper. It's uh, very light. It's a big piece of aluminum or a piece of aluminum tube that slips into these, basically they're little like mini trailer, trailer receivers that I made up. Just square tube with an X-size square tube welded on top of it and a bolt slid through them. The reason I did that is that I can pull that out and I can put a spare tire rack onto the back. Um, or um, you can always pull the bumper right off and just uh, put a chain through one of the bolts and tow your car backwards if you want. Another idea, some of you have already thought of it, but a brake light. We're very low to the ground and it's always best to be seen. These LED brake lights are available pretty much anywhere. Again, Amazon's a good way to do it. These are simply round LEDs into some aluminum tube and the wire runs down inside the roll bar into the trunk and hooked into the rear taillight system, rear brake system. And here's one I'm particularly proud of. For a uh, heat shield on your muffler. This was my old crappy snow shovel, which I drilled holes in and uh, used that for my heat shield. Just an idea. When your muffler is this close to your paint, you can often get some header shield. It's a good idea to wrap your muffler in that so you don't bubble your paint. That muffler is actually off a Yamaha R1. In front of it is a flexible joint because there's some movement in the motor and you just don't want to fatigue that exhaust pipe or your exhaust mounts any more than you have to. Well, that concludes our tips and tricks for building your Lotus 7. Thanks for staying with us. If you got any questions or you want to see something expanded on that I looked at here, please let us know and we'll try and help you out. Good luck on building your 7. It is really worthwhile completing and there's nothing like driving your own car on the road. <laughs>